Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the kinetic theory of, the ma of matter. And what I first want to introduce are the three basic states of matter. In fact, I don't need to introduce them to you. You already know what they are. They are solids. And we like to um, show that with a lowercase s in parentheses. Liquids. Lowercase l and gases. You've all heard of these before, lowercase g. Now, I want to try to illustrate these. Pretend that you can see from the molecular perspective. You're looking through the world's most powerfulest microscope. That doesn't exist. And you can see molecules of solids, liquids, and gases. We're going to try to draw a picture of maybe what we would see. In fact, to help you with this, when you go to Google Classroom for this discussion, um, there is a FET simulation, uh, P-H-E-T, that you can look at um, that shows us maybe a little bit better than I can draw them. So if I could see solid particles, uh, let's just pretend a particle is a sphere. And um, I could zoom right in on them. You would see that solids, the particles are really, really close together. And they form a very, very organized system. There's very little space between the molecules. You can see we can't squish them any closer together. Um, they have a definite shape. Um, they can't flow past one another because they're, they vibrate in what we call a fixed position. Liquids, on the other hand, are a bit different. They're still really, really close to each other. But you'll see that the organization that we saw in the solid uh, illustration is not quite there for the liquid illustration. In fact, at the surface, some of these particles might actually leave and go into the vapor state. Uh, the gaseous phase, the molecules or particles are huge distances away from each other. So even drawing three or four inside this square is probably too many because the distance between the particles is so large, the diameter of the individual particle is is essentially negligible. Now, with these illustrations, I think that helps us understand the properties of solids, liquids, and gases a bit better. For instance, as we just said, solids um, cannot be compressed. The particles are already close to each other. We can't squish them any closer to each other than they already are. Uh, they cannot flow past one another. Once again, the solid particles vibrate about a fixed position. They're moving back and forth, up and down, in and out, but they can't flow past one another. Solids have a definite shape. Imagine if you could, uh, taking a rock um, from one container and placing it into another container. The shape of that rock is not gonna change. Solids have what we call a definite shape. Um, this pattern that we see is called a crystalline lattice. So solids form crystals. And finally, they have a fixed volume. That's because they uh, can't be compressed. So they have a fixed volume. Now liquids, on the other hand, some of the properties are similar, but some are different. Um, liquids, the particles are still super close together, so for all purposes, we say that liquids cannot be compressed. Um, they take the shape of their container. So instead of having a definite shape, whatever container we put them in, they take the shape of their container. So if I move a liquid from one glass container to maybe uh, a, a, a different container, maybe into a maybe from a cup into a bowl, the liquid will take the shape of whatever container it's in, the shape of that cup or the shape of that bowl. Um, the liquid particles can actually flow past one another. So this particle can move throughout the liquid. This particle here can move throughout the liquid as well, and so can this one. So we say that liquids can flow.
Um, they do have a fixed volume, just like solids. So um, if I take 50 milliliters of water from a graduated cylinder and place that water into a beaker, the volume would still be 50 milliliters, even though the beaker could be much larger or much smaller. So liquids have a fixed volume, just like solids do. Now gases, because their distances are so, uh, the distances between the molecules are so large, gases can be compressed. We've all heard of compressed gases before, compressed air, so they can be compressed. In fact, we can push them so close together and reduce their volume so much, they can get close enough to each other, they start interacting with each other and begin to liquefy if we apply enough pressure or make it cool enough, which we'll be talking about a little bit later today. Like uh, liquids, um, gases can take the shape of their container. Gas particles can flow past one another. So this gas particle can flow throughout its container. This one can flow as well. It can, they can move past one another. Gas particles can flow. Now, a big difference between gases and solids and liquids is that they take up the volume of their container. So if I have a canister of compressed gas, and I open the valve of that compressed gas up into my classroom, that gas will occupy the entire volume of my room. Um, if my room wasn't sealed and my doors were open, that gas would take, the entire, take up the entire volume of the school and eventually move out into the, to the world. Gases take the volume of whatever container they're in. So that wraps up the first part of this discussion. Three basic states of matter, and some properties of those three basic states. Thanks for tuning in. See you in a few minutes for the next part.